So now that you guys know my decision on why I decided to drop out of nursing school and what I decided to do now, let's talk about me getting into a master's level registered dietitian program. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Janae if you're new and welcome to a new video. I make content all about wellness centered around my own weight loss, fitness, and nutrition journey. And if any of that interests you, then I hope you subscribe. So today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I got into two master's level nutrition programs to become a registered dietitian why I had to apply to two different programs and the drama that has been associated with that and the admission requirements and you know just a brief overview of the two schools. So since I already have my bachelor's degree and it's not in nutrition they are making a shift in the registered dietitian profession where everyone who's an RD has to have a master's degree by 2024 I believe and with that there is more opportunities now and there's more programs now that you can go and obtain a master's level degree in nutrition and dietetics and test out and become a registered dietitian so that's where I'm at I am someone who already has their master's degree in psychology and I am going after a master's degree in nutrition to then finish pass do my clinicals and then become a registered dietitian so there was two schools that i looked at there's several but there's two main schools that i looked at that was going to get me there pretty quickly that didn't require a whole bunch of prerequisites and that was pretty fast and easy when it came to applying to the school one more so than the other this school that i applied and got accepted to is called union Institute and University is based out of Ohio. This was going to be a 24 month online program and I will have to do my clinicals in person, you know, do what I have to do for the next two years, graduate, that's it. There were some prerequisites, but I already had them. It was like chemistry and something else. I can't remember because I already had it from my bachelor's degree. I had to get three letters of recommendation, no GRE, had to have a 3.0 or above, I have a 3.3 and sit in my resume and then there was like some questions so I had to do a personal statement based off of those questions. I applied I want to say it was somewhere in April and they weren't doing their um, admission board until the first week of June. So I found out mid June that I got accepted into this program super aesthetic super happy it was all good um i had some bumps in the rows because since i was moving i needed to secure my sel which is my supervised experimental locations for my clinical hours essentially um before i could register for my first set of classes i needed to get that part locked down for the next semester um, and it was hard. It was hard because I'm new to the state. I need to figure out my connections, all this stuff. It was coming down to the wire and I finally found a place and was able to register for classes. So before I get into the drama and the tea on this particular school, I just want to say that everything that i'm about to share is pretty much public knowledge is public records you can find it in a news article it's been blasted to all undergraduate master's level students um from this school i definitely did cut out people's names because it's irrelevant to the story i'm just sharing with you guys what happened what's happening and what I've read and researched. I truly don't know the specifics on what has been going on. All of this is alleged, but um, yeah, there's definitely something going on and I'm just cutting ties. And for you nosy people, um, the school's website isn't even current. It's not up to date. So if I'm talking about someone specifically, like let's say a department chair, the people who are on the site that's listed, they're not even current right now. Names and pictures, those aren't even the current faculty that I'm talking about. So 
keep it cute. This also isn't to blast the school, slander the school or anything like that. This is just to share my journey, my story and make other potential students aware and to be cautious of not even this school, but any school that you decide to go to because we're talking about investing a lot of money, a lot of time into these institutes. I understand that things happen, but the way things are going right now, it's kind of unacceptable. So I just want people to be cautious. Um, you know, when you take that step into your career and your journey and furthering your education, just, just be mindful of the places that you decide to go to. Classes was supposed to start August 28th, I wanna say. And I've been checking my portal for weeks, trying to see, you know, what financial aid was gonna look like. And there was still nothing, nothing, no financial aid awards, nothing, which I thought was strange. Our cohort was supposed to have a Zoom meeting with our department chair, you know, introducing ourselves and she canceled it last minute, the day of, and I thought that was strange. Then we got an email stating due to financial issues and financial aid, they were going to postpone class until September 11th. Hmm, strange, okay. I think a week goes by and Funny enough, my husband and I was up watching this documentary on HBO. So the name of that documentary was called BS High, I believe. It's based off of this football program out of Ohio, I believe, that happened like 2021, 2022. Never even heard of this story when it happened, but it was this big thing, big scandal about a allegedly a fake school and you know, there was some money being stolen and I don't know. It was just this big documentary that's on HBO. It just pretty much got released. So go check it out if you haven't because it is so good, but so insane. So I remember it was a Sunday night. We watched that. The next day, Monday morning, I checked my financial aid. There's nothing. Went to my school email. My clinical director sent out an email state in effective immediately she was resigning her position, which is strange because she didn't start that position until the end of June. So I immediately emailed my department chair, like what is going on with the delay of starting of school and then she's quitting? What is going on? Is there something that we need to know? I also reached out to a classmate of mine. She actually is supposed to be graduating this summer. Um, I found her on Instagram when I was doing all my research, trying to, you know, find different classmates and people who are going to the school to get real life experience. And I also hit her up. The stuff that I found out about the school angers me. And I wish I would have done more research beforehand and I wouldn't be in the situation now. But essentially the school hasn't been allegedly paying their employees since December. Been misusing um, financial aid, students haven't been getting their financial aid refund checks. It's been this whole thing. And on top of that, my department chair emailed me back saying if I was you, I would get a backup plan. <laughs> you got the department chair saying that? Oh, I know it's, I know it's going down. So I immediately was like, oh, I was looking up two schools. Let me go ahead, see what I need to do for that next school. Um, see how long this process is gonna be, you know, because I didn't fully researched it since I already had my eyes set on this other school. Let me just jump on this now because I don't want no parts of this. <laughs> that documentary scared me enough. I don't want no parts of it. Basically, I went ahead, I applied for this program. I do need to do three prerequisites for the school, which they offer, but it does delay my graduation time by six months. So I won't be done with my master's until the end of summer of 2026, plus me not starting right now, which, you know, I had to wrap my mind around it, but this all happens for a reason and I'm just thankful that I'm able to get into yet another program. So the school that I'm now attending is the University of New England for me to get in. Again, I had to have above a 3.0 GPA. I had to give out some um, references, not letters of recommendation. I had to do a, a statement, personal statement, and then I also, 
no GRE. So, um, and then it took me three weeks to find out that I've been accepted, but I have finally been accepted and I'm in a good program. And it's the same setup. It's going to be an online school, but I have to do my clinical hours in person. So I am going to take you guys through my schooling journey as I become a registered dietitian. And you guys know I could not film this without getting a shirt like I've done it before. You know, I had to get a shirt, but I am just so ecstatic that I am here, that I know exactly what it is that I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm getting a master's degree instead of another bachelor's. If you guys have any questions as far as the retro dietitian profession, how I get in, you know, anything specific, my school, my new school, you know, all of that stuff, leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on on social media where I post all of my day to day as far as what I'm doing with my nutrition, working out and my weight loss journey. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.